afternoon, good morning, uh, greetings of the day from whichever part of the world you're joining us. Uh, this is Simran Balani, um, welcoming each one of you to this very wonderful topic, Parenting in Pandemic. And uh, I will start, I welcome each one of you. Thank you very much for joining us and we have a great, great, great panel. Um, so we will start with a deck. Uh, I will present my deck and then we will go forward and uh, meet each of our panelists. Welcome once again. All right, uh, um, Dr. Vasavi, is my screen visible? Uh, yes. Let's do this once again. All right, is, I'm on the slide one. Are we good? Yes. All right, sounds perfect. So Early Child, uh, Early Child Development Forum so presents Parenting awesome. Pandemic, celebrating the successful parent in you. So yes, we are going to talk about challenges, and uh, but primarily we're going to talk about success stories and what is working, what is working for all of us as parents. So successful parenting can be difficult, but it is definitely achievable. So what we are trying to do today is touch the most delicate aspect of, aspect of parenting, multitasking at home, which we all have been doing majorly in the last six months, uh, childcare, self-management. It is, it is not easy, but it's not difficult either. We will learn that in the next one hour. So, uh, we will be listening to our panelists talking about the success stories. We will also be listening to some of uh, tips that has been working for them. Uh, so what do we have today? We are talk going to talk about definitely experience of parenting during the COVID corona time, which is uh, worldwide the same issue. We're going to talk about importance of me time, multitasking, very important, keeping it positive. Um, how, to, how to keep children safe online, uh, work from solutions, how are we going to manage that? Um, important, differentiating bad behaviors or mood uh, swings in children. Cooperation from your family, from your loved ones, from your uh, friends, uh, from your workplace. And important, are we actually mentally accepting this situation even with six months in this corona time? and out of your comfort zone, how do we find solutions? So, uh, you know, there is a lot being said uh, about what is not going well in 2020, but we have not talked about enough of what is going well in 2020. So there are a lot of things, and I draw your attention to the slides. Um, stillness, value of time, we all have long value of time. Purpose, exposure, identity, vision, uh, we kind of learned that we can, we can actually go on to um, live with so much of little that we got. We have, all of us have become uh, more patient, I believe, I would like to believe so. Uh, and returning, returning favors to people, being more empathetic, sympathetic, love. So value the healing just as we value the hurt. All right, so let's talk about ECDF. So ECDF is uh, Early Child Development Forum, which has been established a year back. And we are doing a lot of good things. We are creating awareness. We are making a difference in this segment. We have uh, organized one day carnivals. We are doing a lot of teacher training programs. And please understand teacher training programs do have trickle effects on the children they are working with. We have upcoming projects of distribution of books and play materials and a lot of teacher training programs, which you can find more details on the ECDF uh, website. These are the events. We have an international paper reading event, which is happening uh, on 10th and 11th of September. Uh, all the educators, I would like you to uh, make a note of this and you can, of course, reach out to us and get more information. We are doing one day certificate programs and uh, this time the topic is story play, a storytelling workshop. Uh, this is also happening soon. Uh, again, the details are there and you can also um, write to us if you're interested. We can give you more information on the chat. And we are looking for members. We are looking for members who are passionate about making a difference in this arena, in the early childhood uh, arena. So do contact us and we would love to have you as a part of this community. 
All right, so here is where I welcome uh, our panelists. I welcome Dr. Vasavi, uh, who is the founder chairperson of ECDF, DNA Foundation for Children and Women Welfare. She's MD Inner Foundation and Tender Petals. She's ex trainer with Tata Institute of Social Sciences and also an author of Parenting Handbook. And she's also a recipient of many awards. Welcome, Dr. Vasavi. Thank you, Simran. Uh, we have with us Manju Goel. Manju Goel is a practicing psychotherapist, uh, personal transformation, relationship, and leadership and life coach. She's a founder and director of Edivangelis and also a certified NLP practitioner. Uh, joining us are two uh, beautiful ladies who are sitting out of the US. Uh, I welcome Nidhi from San Francisco. Uh, Nidhi is uh, joining us from Bay Area, as I said. She's been a program coordinator working with uh, a company on US environmental projects for 16 years. She has been a volunteer teacher in Bangalore for a government school. She's also leading a fundraiser for a government school project in Kur. Welcome, Nidhi. Thank you. And a very good morning to you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thanks. Uh, I welcome Karishma Lalwani. She's Director of Product uh, Management with Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce has been awarded as World's Innovative Company uh, by Forbes. She has 16 years of experience worldwide and she has become one of the first five women to attain Technical Arch Architect Certificate. She's also a volunteer at Food Bank with San Francisco and LA and she's joining from LA today. So welcome girls. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. All right. So I will start with uh, Dr. Vasavi. Dr. Vasavi, plain and simple, what is your parenting experience in pandemic? Over to you. Thank you, Simran. This is um, really something that, you know, the pandemic taught me a lot about parenting in terms of, you know, uh, I actually, uh, you know, when it just started, like we were not really expecting anything of this sort to happen. So when it just started, uh, I was like, kind of, okay, this is going to go off. But we saw that the things became more and more intense and our kids started sitting at home. So today I'll be talking as a parent and not as, you know, uh, uh, an early childhood expert. So here, the first thing I had to do was to reorient myself. I would say I had to do four hours Number one, to reorient because I was completely shaken. I didn't know uh, work was, you know, going haywire because everything stopped suddenly. And uh, we had to shift to the online platform. And similarly, the same transition happened for my son, uh, who was not really ready for it because we do not do so many online classes and not here. Second, uh, I had to refocus because, again, the focus got blurred because we had a way of working and we had a specific thing, you know, people are always in their comfort zone. So everything was set and we were like kind of uh, happily enjoying and working and man managing, managing family life. Yet it suddenly got absurd. So I, we had, I had to refocus. The third thing in parenting, I had to reinvent myself as a parent because here a lot of challenges came up. Being a parent, you know, uh, adjusting my son to this kind of a situation or this, you know, uh, unprecedented thing, because we in our lifetime has not seen such kind of an, uh, uh, a situation or a pandemic. So I had to reinvent and I had to really make an effort with my son also to uh, understand this situation and, you know, cooperate. And then we had to redirect our lives. Uh, we just redirected ourselves. We again set our all our units, just like the camera, we refocused. And we redirected. And that is what I think uh, the pandemic has taught me. And these are four hours which I will always savor, keep in my heart. Because uh, I think we need to keep doing this, be it a pandemic or not. We need to keep reinventing, reorienting, and refocusing, plus redirecting ourselves. So it's been a great, great tutor, you know, this pandemic. So this is all I had to say, Simran. Super. So Dr. Vasavi is giving us four hours to remember, reorient, refocus, reinvent, and redirect. I love it. Uh, this is our four hours mantra. We are starting our evening on this note. Uh, Nidhi, may I come to you and ask you, mm -hmm. how has been your experience uh, of parenting in Corona time? Did it change something or was it the same? Um, 
it started off rough, you know. Um, well, initial couple of weeks were actually pretty good because it was a ba- break from the normal day to day life. It seemed like we're all just running, running, running. We just never have time for anything. We're just constantly into like, oh, we're busy. It was just like the morning started at six and it didn't end till like almost midnight, you know. It, it's from dropping kids to to the gym to to doing all the chores and then picking and taking them um, to classes, whether it's uh, football or yoga or whatever. It just, it was just a never ending saga. You're always tired. And then, so first week or two were actually a welcoming break from not having to go anywhere, not having to do anything. But then again, you know, a lot of work comes with it. You know, we have a family of six, you know, we've got older parents living with us. And as it is, we're not, we don't have a lot of help in the U.S. We are the maids, we are the chauffeurs, we are the, you know, cooks, we are the mothers. We, If you're working, then you add on to that, you know. So uh, yes, it did get frustrating and overwhelming. And then and um, the kids started getting frustrated. You know, I've got uh, two kids that are absolute extreme um, in in temperaments. One was quite happy, flopped in bed. The teenager didn't want to, it was very happy, no school. The other one was just after me all day. I couldn't get a minute of break saying, I'm bored, mama, I'm bored, I'm bored. You know, and the teachers were not ready. So the kind of school we have now with the, when the schools reopened, we didn't have it. There was no structure for the first couple of weeks because it just happened so abruptly for the first couple of weeks. The, the, the teachers didn't know what to do. A lot of teachers weren't trained, you know, into any of, some of the older teachers didn't even know how to use the, the computer sure. yes. or email or anything like that. So the, I thought that was very challenging. So eventually they kind of had some structure into maybe an hour or two of work, maybe, you know, so then just the, the whole burden of keeping them busy, keeping them, you know, occupied or whatever the school, it just falls on the mother, you know, and then to add it all, you're, you're responsible for so many people at home so it was very stressful but at the same time I realized you know the kind of time we have now you know with with the kids we never get that kind of time so I think it's it's a great way to utilize that time and you know be close to them and spend that time because it's not going to come back once the pandemic is over so I mean there is like a positive and negatives and both in the pandemic there is so so many other good things that happened about the environment everything was shut down with the environment had a break you know with, there was low pollution levels there were you saw the birds and animals and all these things come out so I think that was just just really nice too we did a lot of hikes and the, the kids got to go out in nature usually it would be like really hectic weekends we would run to the gym they would be on their screen you know and so we just took this time to just kind of do things especially around the kids that they were enjoy that they would enjoy more it's overwhelming but now I think everybody's gotten used to it so it's not so bad yeah. so you kind of you kind of started on a stressful note but then you came back to finding that positivity and uh, to make the best of what was happening uh, so yeah that's that's a good thing and I'm <laughs> glad that you uh, guys were um, able to step out for the hike or something because I remember back in April I mean we almost joined your gang we had no help at home and but yet at the same moment we were not able to get us we were not able to step out as much so um, right but was- w- one thing I one thing I would like to say, I feel at the end of it that adults are more, more challenging than kids, you know, uh, when a situation like this, because when you have so many people and then, you know, the workload is on one person yeah. versus a distribution. So oh. I think it's more overwhelming. Very true. Than, and know, uh, so. Yes, I completely agree. So um, audience, we want you to participate. We want you to tell us what you ha- your experience has been in the last six months, how it was different parenting in last six months versus um, uh, the usual parenting. And I go, um, I'm waiting uh, to come to you, Manju, because I want you to give me tips, not only on parenting, not only from the life coach perspective, then you share your story with uh, as a parent also. So I go to Karishma. Karishma, uh, tell us how was your experience? You're handling a toddler, so I yes. see your hands full, and plus you're uh, handling a very important position in your company. So how was the experience? Thanks, Simran, for the opportunity. So for me, it, it, the experience was kind of like Nidhi as well. It started extremely stressful. I have a three-year-old boy at home. Um, I'm a single mom and I'm working full time nine hours a day. So my days used to start 
I could only work in the pockets of time when he was either sleeping or napping. So what I started doing was I started waking up early. So 5.30 to 9 is when I would take office calls, do my work. Then he would be up by 9. And then 9 to 6 was just caring for him, feeding him, bathing him, making sure he's okay. Um, and then if he slept in the afternoon, I got onto my laptop again and continued to work. And then towards the end of the day as well. Fortunately, I work for a company who gives me that balance or provides me with that option. That's super. Yeah. Right. Because being a director and having a team and, you know, we do projects, we do critical projects for COVID now, now that um, we have to accelerate innovation more and more. So we were rolling out solutions in the U.S. very quickly. Um, What that meant was the job became even more stressful because the deadline became shorter. We had to really roll out projects very quickly so that it could help general population, be it banking solution, be it healthcare solutions. So I realized very quickly that there are a couple of things I need to do to just keep my sanity over here being all by myself. One was completely lower the bar on yourself. So, you know, we as moms have to have this image that we have to be perfect. We have to be perfect at work. We have to be a perfect daughter. We have to be a perfect mother. I completely dropped that. I was like, you know what? If he's not taking a shower at 10 a.m., but he's taking at 8 p.m., it's okay. Nothing is going to happen. The world is not ending. (laughs) Um, If he ate sometime more, sometimes less, it's okay. Like stop judging yourself, stop putting that pressure, especially because it's a young kid, you're constantly worried only because he doesn't have words to express how he's feeling. So you are always constantly judging by his emotions, by his tantrums. Is he fussy? Does he need something? Is he not okay? Um, so I started taking a lot of verbal cues from him. He, w- he started to tell me what he wants, whether he wants to sleep, whether he wants to play. And I just went with the flow. That, that, helped, that put the pressure off. And the second important thing I think all of us need to practice is how to set boundaries. We as you know, women are raised to feel that you should say yes to everybody, be it yeah. parents, you know, grandparents, of work, we always have been raised to feel that you are the one that holds the family together. Um, at this time, more so, we need to set up boundaries. We need to say no when we can't do it. We, we cannot come to a point where, they, where we crash because if we crash, then our kids are at risk. Everybody has heard here, you know, when we take a flight, the air hostess always says, should an emergency occur, put your mask on before your kid. So that is what I started doing. I started saying no to people who were taking my time when I didn't have to give any. And I started caring for myself first because if I'm okay mentally, I will be able to nurture and give a positive life to my child. So setting boundaries and dropping the bar. Those two things have really helped me in the last six months. Very nice. Very nice. So um, it's very interesting to see how we each one of us and uh, have gone through this experience and uh, it goes uh, saying no without feeling guilty goes whether it is a woman or a man because we do parenting equally and hats off to you Karishma for accomplishing what you were doing. I'm going to come to Manju. So Manju you have to tell us uh, two two sides of this, one as a therapist and one as a parent. What was your experience and did people reach out to you uh, asking for help on parenting? Welcome, Manju. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Uh, so I'm going to talk, uh, talk first as a parent uh, because uh, it's all about parenting today. And then I will talk as a coach or a therapist. So it's been a roller coaster ride for me. And uh, I must say right now, uh, it's been the best uh, phase of my life. When I started, it wasn't so. So it was crazy. I mean, one, because it affected my work life a lot, being in the training space. It was very challenging because most of 
my work got stalled. So there was a lot of uh, emotions that I was facing, you know, uh, to deal with uh, the setback that happened all of a sudden. Uh, but then also at home, you know, suddenly in maybe in India, we are so used to having, uh, you know, support in terms of yes. uh, at home. So suddenly there was no help and uh, the entire responsibility kind of came on to your shoulder. But of course, I have a supportive partner. But then yet, uh, you know, it was very difficult for me to, um, you know, find that time for myself to work with my children's emotion, to deal with my own emotions. Uh, but I must say this, uh, it's been six months now. Yes. It's the best of phase of my life. And I can vouch for it that never in my life I'm you know, I don't want another pandemic for sure, but uh, I know for a fact that there isn't going to be a time when all of us are going to be at home the way we are at this time. And uh, typically when children are home all the time, they're like, they're bored. And when they're bored, they are hungry. <laughs> and <laughs> this, led, this led me to yes, being an extremely mother. good cook. <laughs> yes. You know, I have never explored the side of, I've, I've been a lazy uh, cook, I guess, or somehow have managed all these ways, uh, years, but now suddenly this cook in me kind of like woke up overnight and I've been an amazing cook. They say the best way to somebody's heart is through their stomach and this time has proved that for me and it's been a great experience that way. My children are happy. My partner is happy. Pretty much all of us are happy at home. Initially, we used to feel the house is so small, like, you know, wherever you turn, you're bumping into each other and there's no space. And uh, uh, we didn't like the fact, neither did children like, neither did my uh, partner like, or neither did I like that fact. But then now we are so used to each other. There is a sense of se uh, security. And I kind of like really like this whole uh, time of being together at home, working from home, children being around at home. There's so much of good time that we've spent uh, together. Uh, you know, I guess uh, the only uh, time I would get such times was when we went out for trips or something like that. Even then there were so many distractions yeah, outside, you know, so. Now, you're trying to see so much stuff. So, I mean, it is not exactly that like yeah, a lockdown time where you're exactly. all Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my experience as a parent. Uh, how I held on to this is, is a very simple uh, tip I will give. Uh, I call it the ABCD. I put it down as the ABCD. So first, accept your child. You know, it's a very simple rule. All you have to do is accept your child. For you to accept your child first, you need to know yourself first. Okay, so then believe your child is very important. If your child is telling you something, if a child is expressing something, work towards, maybe you don't understand them at this point, but believe your child. C uh, is compare your child with none. If we have two children, you know, those who have two children, we know both our children are different and, uh, uh, you know, they're very different from each other. Though we are the same parent, we bring them up in the same manner, we give them the same experiences, but yet they're very different. So do not compare children with each other and the dialogue with your child. There is no shortcut to anything. All the issues in the world can be just simplified or nullified by open communication. Sometimes we don't understand misbehavior often is a lack of communication and it's a means uh, of communication for children. We'll come to that later, but these dialogue with your child. So these are the four tips I would give to everyone uh, to work with parenting, uh, you know, in pandemic and other times as well. Yeah. So well, thank you. Yes, Manju. Sindran, you have. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Manju. So we are having a lot of, uh, a lot of short things to remember. Four hours, keeping it positive, moving from stress to looking at what is the brighter side, saying no, and the ABCD. Wonderful. This is a perfect start. All right. So, but uh, this, so there are a lot of things that I have been reading on the internet, positive discipline, everyone is anxious, so are your children, pick your battles, pause and slow down, and work-life balance. So Dr. Vasavi, I come to you. Would you want to talk about how you accomplished uh, work-life balance? What worked for you? Would you want to share that with us? Yes, sure, Simran. 
See, basically, uh, since I've been working and uh, work eats up a lot of my time during the day. And uh, we basically, I go to my office. So when the pandemic started, we just stopped because we all had a lockdown. And uh, initial days, you know, it was really a very big uh, change in the routine because uh, we would go out in the morning to the office and all our house helps would come. Uh, because in India, as you know, we have a house help, we have a cook. Uh, so I was like kind of, you know, in a lifestyle where I would just get up in the morning, have my food, go to office. My son goes to school quite early. So that routine was completely, you know, uh, shaken and uh, the, uh, the work, the house help stopped coming. So we had to accommodate our work and our household chores together, you know, kind of. And that, in fact, was very difficult for me because... Uh, uh, I'm not really used to uh, doing a lot of household work. Uh, so uh, the first few days was uh, enjoyable because something you are doing after a long time. Maybe I used to do when I was a teenager or studying in Delhi University. We used to do a lot of our own work. Uh, but then again, I started getting into that whole routine and uh, started dividing the time. Because again, uh, when we need breakfast around that time, the online classes also start. You know, we have our preschools, so we have our online classes. So around that time, even the breakfast, uh, you know, we expect to have breakfast around 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock, 9.30ish. And then my son's classes also start around that time. So we all have to be ready by 9, 9.30. Uh, in fact, you know, complete our, uh, 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 our breakfast and get ready for work. So what I started doing is I started planning down, uh, planning my routine, you know, planning my work. So that plan really worked in one way or the other. Yes, uh, I would like very much, uh, you know, I would second what uh, uh, Karishma said, which was we were not sticking to our routine very strictly, like who would take their bath in the morning or not, or, because even my son was getting lethargic, getting up, uh, you know, late and all of that. So I started uh, just working out a balance. And I think that balance struck pretty well for all of us. And uh, I think uh, by the end, by the time the work, uh, your post started coming back. We were quite settled in our lives. I would, I could do a webinar in between my cookings, and I could, you know, uh, uh, do give uh, trainings to my teachers even while I'm doing some other work at home. So I think that was a pretty good thing to balance the, uh, and and it taught me a lot. I feel so that that is how I managed to balance my work life. Very good, well said. And I think it was uh, it is also a process of unlearning. We all of us uh, have unlearned a lot of things in the last six months to learn uh, the new normal that is uh, nowadays called. Mm -hmm. So planning a routine and multitasking is what worked for Dr. Vasavi. But at the same time, while we are managing, especially the women who are managing their careers, they're managing their home and they're managing these routines, uh, not only their online routines, but their children also, there's a lot of emotional turmoil somewhere. All right. And that keeps going up and down and up and down. Like for someone like me, I started with denial. I mean, I for, for me, I, I told my management, like, what are you talking about? Let's take a week's break and come back. I mean, we are doing great <laughs> stuff normally. And from, uh, from, that, uh, uh, from that denial, I went to a whole anxious state. Like, how can I not travel? How can I like, not go? I would, I would travel back. So it took me some time to come to. But there was a lot of emotional uh, ups and downs. And at that time, while you are emotional, you are trying to manage your children's emotion also. Because it's tough for them also. They are missing their part time. They are missing their friends. They are missing their teachers. So maybe I come to you. I know uh, you're very, very uh, good with uh, where it comes to emotional grounding and emotional management, not only of yourself. I've known you for two decades and you're a very, very calm and a very positive person and you have sustained that over the period of time. So talk to me about um, the managing the emotions or talk about um, emotional grounding. You know, um, this is a general thing, pandemic or no pandemic. Emotional grounding is very important because that's what makes uh, emotionally strong and independent, uh, responsible adults. If you don't start now, it's never going to happen. And then now it's more relevant. You hear things about mental illness, uh, kids committing suicide, um, kids doing drugs and alcohol. So I think it's not something that happens overnight. It's something that starts in the childhood and then goes all the way. 
So a child's behavior is just an expression of their needs. And if those needs are not met, you know, we, we say bad behavior, they're, it's not bad. They're, they're, they're asking for help. They need something. So that's something you just cannot like, you know, tell them, oh, it's just a bad behavior. Why are you acting out? When they're little, the needs are different. As they start growing through uh, stages of their um, uh, you know, young life, adolescent life, the needs become different. Mm. So the need for connection with the parents is very, very important from the very beginning. You know, if the child is not behaving properly, we as parents need to calmly figure out what the meaning behind is. If they're, they could be hungry, they could be tired, they could have had a, a you know, fight with a friend, they could be unhappy with us because we've done something to them that they don't fair, feel was fair to them, you know. Uh, we've grounded them in a way that, you know, they said, oh, we can't connect the dots, like, oh, I did this, but they're just telling me to do completely giving me something, a punishment that is not even related to what I did, you know. So we're, we're, we're constantly, as parents, I feel like a lot of us, we think, oh, these are our kids and we own them. So we're constantly attacking their integrity. You know, we're blaming them, we're shaming them, um, you know, we're calling them names. And we don't even think about it as adults. You're like, oh, you're stupid. Why are you doing this? Why are you lying? Why are you cheating? You're a bad person because you're doing this, you know? So you're constantly blaming them, shaming them, uh, even uh, inflicting pain upon them. We, sometimes we hit our kids too. And I'm guilty of doing that. So I'm not going to say I'm a saint here, you know? It's a learning process for parents too, right? So I've learned a lot along the way. And we, we do that. And when we are doing that, it for the child, it translates into look I must be really bad I must be doing constantly doing something bad to make my you know parent feel this way and then they have the feeling of um, shame and they, they start hating themselves and they the guilt is there so when that builds up through the entire childhood or whatever you know they start acting out as teenagers they shut you out of their life you know and they don't want to talk to you. And most parents will say, my teenager doesn't even want, want to talk to me. What is it? I mean, the problem here is that you forgot to connect with them through the growing years. You're always so busy trying to discipline them, you know, and, and, and get caught in what's right and what's wrong. You forgot to, you know, get in touch with their feelings and how they're feeling, you know. So when we are telling our kids that your behavior is more important than your feelings, mm -hmm. then you're basically saying your feelings don't matter, you know, and you're, when your feelings don't matter, mm -hmm. then you don't matter. So the connection with kids always happens at the level of feelings, not at the level of behavior. So if you cannot connect with them on the level of feelings, you just will not be able to you know, connect with them at the behavior level. You'll always be like, oh, they're misbehaving, they're misbehaving. So it's always like you have to figure out what the problem is, you know, and they only learn when they're connected to us and then we're calm and we're willing to listen to their side of the story. You know, once they figure out, no matter what I do or say, my parent is not going to listen to me, they start to lie to us, they, li they start to say things that are not, they start to act out, you know. So just like us, as adults, do we like to be disciplined? I don't think so, right? So it, it's just human nature, right? So they don't like to be disciplined. So I just, I just, you know, so how do you address your behavior? You know, I mean, you have to think about how, what their feelings are, you know, or whatever. Uh, if you're in going into a work situation and your boss calls in and starts screaming and yelling at you, how would you feel? Yes, uh, but maybe I have a question here. A lot of women are parents. Uh, one of the parents, or maybe sometimes both of the parents, will agree to what you're saying is managing their emotions, like not calling them name, not shaming them about their feelings. But uh, but at the end of the day, um, have you also worked out a plan where you're involving the family in your plan, right? Mm -hmm. Like the family is on the same page as you, right? Because a lot of times uh, when we are staying with uh, with uh, extended family or we're um, having grandparents, the views might be different, right? So in your case, yes, you're a family of six. So very quickly, have you also sat down with the family and said, well, we are going to uh, take better emotional um, care of our children during this time? I'm lucky because I'm able to put my foot down, right? And I know a lot of women in India, especially, are not lucky. You know, if I don't feel something is appropriate or if my child is unhappy about something, I've established enough relationship 
with them that even if it's something that another adult in the house is uh, has said that's bothering them that they can come and come confide in me especially with my 13 year old he he comes to me all the time and says you know oh um so and so i'm not going to take names said something to me and i'm really hurt you know and okay, and so i don't like it you know can you so with your children so even if even if the extended family or the other members of the family are not following what you're saying or what you believe in the children are still coming back and talking to you so you have laid the yes, foundation you, it's absolutely you have to connect with them that's the whole bottom line that the child needs to be able to confide in you and they need to yes. confide in somebody because if they don't then they're going to turn to their peers and their friends cannot give them the kind of guidance and advice that an adult can give them and that an adult who has the child's best interest so that's what happens with a lot of kids when the parents don't understand they they go outwards they're looking for you know they're if they're not getting all of the things that they 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 should be getting at home then they get into yeah. things outside they're looking for validation they're looking for attention and then if you look oh. at most oh. of the kids that get into drugs and stuff it's because they they want to be somebody they want to be something they want to be accepted it's all about acceptance so if the, if the acceptance comes from home then the child doesn't need to go outside oh. yeah simran uh, i have something to add to what both of you please just please said may i please, please. sure Okay, so uh, talking about uh, Simran, you, uh, I would like to mention a little bit about the Kubler Ross uh, grief cycle. Okay, you mentioned, you said you went through the denial process. So I would like to take you all through the process of how acceptance comes through. Okay, so he gave a beautiful. We work with five emotions before we reach through acceptance. The first step is always denial. Okay, so when there is change or uh, you know something as drastic as this, which is you know it's completely a mess that so the first thing we do is denial we go through this process of denial then there's anger you know you you just shouting and you just you know it's just a mess everywhere <laughs> okay and then you start bargaining you're like what can i do what else can i do uh, you 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 bargain with everything everybody around you so and the next step is depression or then you go through the sadness you know in extreme case if it's grief then it is depression otherwise in this case most of us go through extreme sadness you know and after sadness is when acceptance come and once we've accepted the situation only then we look for tools to work with the situation okay so once there is actual acceptance then there is acknowledgement and then there's action okay so adding on to what nidhi said you know so the reason why children uh, kind of uh, are not listening to us or uh, there is so much of emotions uh, you know which is uh, uh, overflowing um, you know so maybe i will talk about a little bit about uh, alderian um, uh, psychology okay so alderian psychology talks about belongingness and significance okay so uh, he, um, he he i mean um, uh, dr alfred um, aldor all he he mentioned sorry i thought <laughs> okay so he said that all of us look for we all want to be um, we all want to feel important we all want to be significant okay so if we don't get it easily then we misbehave so everything is about this power struggle wherein you know uh, it's it's a need for uh, autonomy like you know so where there is it's a, it's a power struggle always when children uh, feel they're not heard uh, when they feel their emotions are not accepted uh, you know that's when they start uh, throwing tantrums uh, um, they they're crying yelling and most often we as parents the first thing that we do is we start off i remember as a parent uh, until i was exposed to the this field or i came across strategies uh, or how to work with this me as a parent the first thing i would uh, resort to was yelling uh, nagging uh, i keep on repeating the same thing you know ye karo wo karo and then reminding them constantly do this do that so children kind
kind of gets lost they feel so powerless in the situation and uh, uh, for because they want some power because they want to feel equal because they want to feel important they misbehave so misbehavior is never random okay it is always um, um um you know a way of communicating you know a way of getting attention so if we tune into our children uh, if we try to understand their behavior we will understand that they are trying to communicate to us by misbehaving and maybe i'll give you four Yes, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, Simran. Hold on to my. Yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll give you four uh, tips how to work with this as well. Okay. So the first thing is uh, body, mind, soul connection. I came. Uh, I read, uh, you know, Amy McCready's book. So she beautifully explains this. So when she talks about body, mind, soul connection, what she means by that is like if you have two children, make sure that you spend at least. Five minutes in a day, you know, five to ten minutes in a day, where you are completely, wholly, solely with your child. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you're having a teenager at home, you, you know, when you decide that you want to go and spend some time with them, they will show you away. Okay, they are not ready to listen. They don't want to. So we have to be very careful as a parent. We have to watch out for those those times when. they are receptive or they are in the mode to listen but i'm sure through the day we as parents we can identify that time uh, at which we can connect with our child and when we connect with our child everything else especially the smartphone should be kept aside you know so just put yourself completely into your child listen talk about for me that bonding happens i have um, two children that is my daughter who's a teen and a son who's a pre-tween he's going to be a teenager soon so with him i connect uh, in the night okay so he that is the time when we are going to bed uh, i spend some time she likes to be alone so she doesn't allow me to talk so he spends time i spend good amount of time he'll tell me what happened in the day you know he'll tell me about his sister he'll tell me about his friends um, or what whatever it is you know so he feels important and when he feels important if i have to convey something to him the next day i know how to talk to him i mean yeah. they give us cue the best way of uh, to learn parenting is uh, our children you know they will tell us what is their expectation uh, exact there is nobody else who can teach we don't have to look for strategies outside they will actually if you tune into them they will lead us to what they want okay likewise if you have a teenager at home we have to be very careful okay so teenage is a time when they go through a lot of emotional physical sexual changes a lot of changes are happening uh, at this phase in life maybe i'll give for most of them uh, you know especially i get a lot of cases during this uh, pandemic uh, with teenagers uh, nidhi also was mentioning about having a teenager and how difficult it is i i actually reckon with you with your challenges you know so it's so maybe i'll uh, i'll talk about four things which is very common in a teenager okay the first thing is we uh, as parents we need to understand this teenagers they are always egocentric you know so what i mean by egocentric is for them they see the world from their point of view so everything revolves around them um now just give me a moment i have just put down a few points okay so it the world everything is full of himself or herself and they completely self absorbed um i think nidhi you will agree with me <laughs> so they are uh, everything is about themselves okay and they have this incongruent emotional states that is what they are thinking what they are feeling and what they are expressing is very different and their empathy levels at it is at another level okay their empathy for others emotions is always influenced by their own emotional state okay so if they are feeling uh, happy and excited they can connect to you know others from that point of view only they somehow cannot connect uh, with others from an uh, you know from another point uh, another emotional uh, state okay and also the next thing is uh, teenagers are always uh, uh, um, hypocritical hypocrisy they call this as adolescent hypocrisy okay and at this time i mean everybody who has a teenager will uh, know that you know like no matter what we tell them they don't seem to understand okay? okay and everything is the you know they contradict themselves okay so this is a very typical behavior of um, uh, you know a teenager next thing is person manju hi 
so I'll sorry, I'll just pause you here. And uh, yes, this all things that you're talking about definitely are very good tips uh, for somebody to manage teenagers. And uh, yes, there is a need of attention, and yes, there is a lot of a uh, lot of uh, need of importance because they are egocentric. But but uh, remember, this is a big change for us also. We adults who were used to going out, doing our things, uh, and suddenly, I mean, we are also learning as parents. We were not born as parents. Like with children, we are also learning how to be better parents each day, right? So I want to go to Karishma and talk about, uh, talk about the importance of me time. Yes, it is very important um, that we give attention to our children, give importance to our children. So Karishma, I come to you very quickly for you to talk to us about the me time, how it helped you and how it helped you to become a better mother and a better, uh, better person at work also, or better performer. Sure. Thanks, Simran. Uh, I, I kind of alluded to the fact uh, earlier that, you know, you have to put your own mask first, get the oxygen that you need, only then you will be able to assist your kids. It's very important because um, self-care is so underrated. And oftentimes, you know, in our culture, we feel guilty. You know, if we take, say, 30 minutes to go to, even on a regular day, take a long bath, or just listen to your favorite song, just tune off from the world. Um, it's almost like that has a, a lower priority than looking out for your kid who's probably screaming and your immediate impulses drop everything that you need and go help the child because the child needs you. Well, that is true for the most part because whenever they are around you, they would need you, especially having a toddler who does not understand what office work is, how important you know it is to take phone call from work or your boss giving you some instructions. Um, I have learned to figure out pockets of time to just have that time for myself. And by that, what I mean is prioritizing your own well-being and if we don't do that, then we fall into other coping mechanisms, which are on the other extreme end, like we eat too much, or some people, you know, would just open a bottle of wine. Oh my God, I'm so stressed. I need wine. Those are the negative sides, or you can fall into that trap because they're easy. You just try to feel, oh, there's so much going on with me. I need some help. So, you know, I'm just going to eat, order a pizza, or I'm just going to... Uh, pop open champagne. No, that's not the right way to deal with it. The right way to deal with this is actually doing something that energizes you. And by that, I mean is some form of physical activity, whether it's, you know, going for a walk for 20 minutes, whether it's just doing yoga, whatever form of physical activity you like the most and do it alone. Don't, don't feel the pressure to, you know, okay, I, I need to take my child. Uh, you know, it's, if you have a backup, if you have someone to look after your child for 30 minutes, take that important 30 minutes to re-energize, recharge yourself, reset your mental composure. Because when you do that, then you come back with a lot more positivity, a lot more calmness and a lot more energy to again deal with day to day. With, in another thing that I have done is, uh, you know, not to look at this as um, it, it can get overwhelming too quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm taking care of a toddler. I'm a single mom. There is work. There's nobody around, no friends, no family. The pandemic never seems to end. Oh, my God, the, what is happening? It, that is one side of thinking. But if you just change your perspective, the same situation you can handle with utterly, dis, uh, utterly grace and humility. So what I do is. I don't even read the news anymore. I don't want to log into Twitter. I, yeah. I, I don't want to know what's going on. I don't want to know how many cases up or down. Those things feed into that anxiety. So I just completely switch off. I switch off the you know, group chats where people send forwards about, oh, you know, this happened, that happened. Just completely tune off and take it one hour at a time. Focus on little things like I need to prep meals for lunch for the next hour take take it one hour at a time and don't look at this in as you know something is going wrong the whole world is ending that will obviously lead to a lot of anxiety minimizing your you know what you want to get to setting goals smaller goals because if you set smaller goals say i say i have to make lunch and if i make that it will be rewarding and that will reinforce the positivity that Yes, this is tough, but I'm tougher. I am getting things done. 
I don't need to worry about. Yeah. Well said. So, uh, so Manju told us about giving importance and attention to our children, whatever age group it would be. Nidhi talked about uh, being emotionally connected with them, no matter how much is the size of the family, no matter who says what, the child is coming and talking to the mother because she has already come connected emotionally. Dr. Vasari, what do you have to say about this? What works during this time? How do we manage the stress and still uh, do the parenting right? See, basically stress is there because uh, of the times, but uh, like uh, Karishma had said, we need to manage ourselves first. Uh, even at times, you know, when uh, my son comes and talks to me, maybe at that point of time, I'm having some work issues, uh, something or the other, and maybe I'm not in a mood to do that. So in those times, I, uh, I try to make my son understand that this is not the right time and we will get back to each other again. Because there is where I draw that space. I need the space for myself. Uh, I need the time to operate. I cannot completely dedicate everything for everyone. So, you know, uh, your own mental health also matters. So this was a time which was very trying because uh, we had a lot of challenges in our work life. And because of these challenges, it actually kind of trickled down to the family life as well in the very beginning, you know. So it was like uh, I would stay irritated at times because this has to be done and, you know, uh, catering to something else and then something other is waiting in the process. So, uh, you know, this uh, was a little tough. And then probably I also had a little, uh, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, kind of. Uh, tips with my son because I was not giving that time or maybe you know I was not able to balance it that well in the beginning but I think we sorted it out and that is what is important because even your child needs to know your uh, uh, your space and I have been very particular since my son was uh, one year old that uh, because I meditate and because I sit and you know think on my own so I tell him there is certain time like this one hour please don't come and uh, come into my yes. room or you know just let me be Absolutely. so that we will be with so you in a, the kid a yeah we need our yes. time as well and as mothers or as a woman in our society with the role play we have you know we have too many expectations on our heads and we tend to feel guilty about stuff very fast but I think that you no know, we have to actually draw the line uh, because we come, we are an individual and then we deal with the others. And if we are a healthy individual, body, mind and spirit, we can deal with the others in a better way. So this is what I practice with my family, with my extended family and even in my work life. All right, sounds good. So I think it is more um, what the takeaways that I'm thinking and we have the last 10 minutes in this segment is that we definitely need to give importance to our children. We definitely need to learn more and more about parenting because as I said, we were not born parents, but at the same time, we need to we need to see how we can do better each day. And you know, I read something very uh, nice um, on an article that I was uh, reading from a Michigan University State's website, and I would like to quickly share that with you. And I also open at the same time for audience questions. Um, can you see this? Are you able yes. to see? This? Yeah, All right, right, so I yeah. really like this and I want everybody to take a minute to absorb this. It says you are enough. It is okay to feel overwhelmed right now. It is okay to skip a day of learning activities. You know, we are, uh, especially somebody like me who has OCD and I need to control it. It's okay not to follow the plan. If we have a plan and we're not able to follow, it's okay. It's okay to go easy on the rules. You haven't parented through a pandemic before. Love your children. Make sure they feel safe that is enough you are enough so i this really really touched my heart and i um i felt that yes it is okay that we are overwhelmed sometimes if we are irritated it's okay that we are irritated i mean we don't need to be all zen and you know all uh, nice and calm all the time so um i'm opening for uh, the audience questions i will come back to each panel panelist with their closing thoughts um but i open uh, for audience questions and uh, we are. Um, we would like to hear from you as to what you think. Uh, Manju, do you have a very quick uh, two to three minutes presentation for us? Um, I do have a presentation, but uh, uh, I'm not sure if we have the time for it, uh, Simi. Uh, let's uh, yeah, we will see. Have we have uh, questions. Yeah. We look, Maybe. let's look for the questions and then I would like to go to each one of the panelists to give their closing thoughts 
and uh, you you guys have been wonderful audience uh, yes we have a question uh, between our work and cause yes how do we manage stuff trust me we all are figuring it out <laughs> we all are trying to figure you know what i read a very very interesting article so there was this guy who was taking a call from his home and he's shutting everybody up and he's like don't talk don't talk i have um, i'm talking to my manager and this old grandma walks in and talks to the manager and says hello this is my house and you have made a office out of my house and i need to have some permission to talk in my house so you know what you're all learning and yes we do uh, you know we do it say everybody that you have to keep quiet and it is my very important call but at the same time i was on a on a learning session with finland and i saw this girl small little girl coming and sitting with her mother and the mother didn't mm -hmm. seem bothered she was like it is okay you just come and yeah. then she removed the headphone and put one in her ears to listen to what the mother was um, doing so i think as i said it's okay we done yes, yes. we have so some and i can i so can take quest. that uh, question for right. work and uh, kids mm -hmm. um what i do is uh, i have some so if i lock like you said if i lock my door my kid will be banging and screaming my for attention so i keep the door open and we have to realize that we the kids are not disrupting our work the work is disrupting their home this is their home this is their space where they want to sleep where they want to play and it's very important to realize that it's not the kids who is who are the problem it's the work coming home because if you're out they don't see you they have not seen you on the calls they don't know what you do whenever they see you you are this nurturing mother who takes care of them and suddenly you're not giving them attention it's very odd to them to see you in that new role where you're constantly on calls so what i would recommend is if you have small kids you know just welcome them bring them into where your office is and give them some toys to play sometimes they just want to see you sometimes they just want to be around you it's not necessarily that they want to play with you so i did some fun things like you know writing something and anishma i can, can i i need to um, so yes that's great for for the toddlers and whatever but what happens with the older kids they know exactly what they're doing because they know yeah. when you're busy and you, they come and ask for something you just want to shoo them off because you're in the middle of because i've been through this you know not during pandemic Absolutely. but before when i was working from home with sick kids or whatever they know exactly what they're going to get at what time from me even now when i'm on a phone call they want to come to you because if they want watching time they know if i'm on a important phone call or busy i'd be like okay go go whatever this is the time so so i think you know uh, this is a conversation we need to have in our homes all the time this is where the healthy boundaries you create the healthy boundaries you, you this if 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 hitting you is not okay why is it okay to get them to get them to get whatever they want during so if if it's a firm no there it should always be a firm no and once it's a firm no because when they know oh yeah they're in the middle of something these are the vibes you're giving them that when it's a clear yes when it's a clear no when it's a maybe so maybe is when they slip through the cracks because now they know you're going to give in to the pressure because you're in the middle of something so the key is not to give in to that pressure for a few times then they will know your no means no they and cannot do this why you're, why you're because why you doing that you need to be good uh, very strong doing that yes of yes so simi uh Sorry. Sydney, I'd like to give another. Uh, so there is a strategy that we use as uh, yeah. coaches, uh, so, you, which is. We have a minute to for you to finish that because then I have to give yeah. you for a closing talk. Really yeah. Yeah. So, so this strategy is called when then strategy. Okay. So when children ask you for gadgets, so in beginning, you know, much before. So there needs to be a structure. We can set the structure much before, you know, the beginning of the day itself or be beginning of the week or anything. When since all of us are working from home, so when then we say that when you've completed your schoolwork, 
you get your gadget. So when you finished eating, you get TV time. So this, uh, it's, it's a beautiful, it works very effectively. I've done with many parents and it always works. When you finished exercising, when you finished your Surya Namaskars, you get this. So this when then strategy is a very effective strategy, which most parents can use for gadgets, for if you have to say no to something and you don't want to say no directly uh, to, yeah, so that is something that your thoughts on this and closing comments yeah so i i was just getting into the gadget thing you know i was just wondering because it's so difficult to keep your children off the gadget though you know we uh, we try to do it all the time and you know and i i've seen parents but i feel that in order to keep the gadgets off you need to get involved with your children at times and also when you're working if your child needs the gadget you i think you have to get your child involved even before that time you know in some work and tell them that Right after I finish my work, I'll get back and see whether you've completed the task I've given you. So even that, you know, keeps the child busy. So I've been working out strategies to keep my son away from gadgets because now they have it all the time because of the online classes. Well, my closing comment is yes. uh, these are times, uh, trying times. Yet, if we have empathy, uh, we need to put ourselves in each other's shoes. Uh, it is not only about them understanding us or us, us understanding them. We all work as a, you know, live as a family, we cohabit, and we should all work in a concerted effort to make our lives good. So every moment is good. The moment you are angry, irritated, it just spoils the entire environment, right? So why, why, why create that kind of a, uh, uh, an environment that really upsets you? So instead, uh, even if you, when you get too angry, you can just smile and, you know, pass that, uh, anger out of yourself it's not easily easy to do easy to say yet but uh, i feel that that has really worked for me and i would uh, tell all the parents that uh, do not get into that anxiety and frustration instead try to release your stress and try to divert your mind at that point of time uh, hear some good music and just relax and you'll see that in uh, you know after some years or probably after some months these situations are going to look like nothing to us yeah. you know and we would laugh at it so why make a mess out of it when we don't need to actually? Might as well that, have to be about it. Thank you, Dr. Vasavi. Closing thoughts, uh, Nidhi. So I just feel that uh, this pandemic, uh, although there's been ups and downs, I think what it's taught us is to live in the moment. I tell my kids to, uh, instead of looking at the negative, just see how much a time you got to spend um, at home and you're, you're making a living history. Well, I also add, if we get through this to them, but yes, you know, if we're, we're careful, we'll get through this. And, and it's just all this time spent together. And, to, and I think finally we've come naked in terms of, uh, you know, who we are as people, you know, because everything's been taken away from us. So it is what it is. You deal with one day at a time and you learn to live in the present moment. And for all the women out there, I think you really, really need to take care of yourself before you take yes, care of anybody absolutely. else. Otherwise, absolutely. you just, absolutely. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Karishma, very quickly, closing thoughts. So closing thoughts, I would just say three things. On the emotional side, um, it, everybody needs to know that suffering is a choice. When you are presented with a trauma in life, you, ch you are the one who chooses to suffer or chooses to take it in your stride and deal with it head on and move on from it. So suffering is totally a, a, your choice. Nobody's telling you, you have to be sad. So you have to get out of that mindset. Oh my God, you know, I'm the victim or something happened to me. Second thing is practice gratitude. This is what I've started doing. Take a journal, write three things down every night before you go to bed on what are you thankful for. If you sleep with that last thought, knowing that these are the three things you're thankful for, you'll sleep better through the night. Okay. And the third thing is always come up with some physical activity. It is scientific that it releases good hormones. It, it reduces stress. It it grooves your body into feeling better. So do not just sit at home, watch TV, you know, take that 30 minutes, do yoga, go out. If you can't go out, just run and, you know, in wherever between the rooms or whatever. But that, that hormones that is generated, it, it connects with your mental well-being as well. People don't realize how interconnected physical and mental well-being is. All right, good. Thank you very much, Karishma. Closing thoughts, Manju, very quickly before we wrap up the session. 
So I will add on to what Karishma had said, self-care. You can never pour from an empty cup. So never forget to take care of yourself. And uh, next, always take care, fill your ch a child's attention basket and power basket. Power basket by allowing them to make decision, uh, by allowing them to make, uh, do little things around the house. Don't uh, name it as chores instead say home task give them a decision making powers and uh, fill their attention basket with love and unconditional acceptance so right. that's my parting right. thoughts you said. yes absolutely and tick up cannot pour i read a very nice thing the movement is what kids want and the movement is what kids remember so it is all about the present try to make this difficult time easy for them by being perky yourself i try that as much as possible if i'm perky she sees me happy she will know how to get through a tough time uh, so yes thank you very much for being such a lovely audience and a special thanks to Nidhi and Karishma so waking up so early and joining us uh, for this uh, webinar. Thank you very much, Manju. And thank you, Dr. Vasavi, for giving us this platform of ECDF to do such wonderful things. So thank you very much, audience. And we will see you very soon, uh, maybe with the same panel talking about we have a uh, lot, lot of things. These, we all women had just one hour of mock session. So imagine the topics that we can come back with. Women liberation and uh, I better not say it. All right. Thank you so much. And this is a wrap. And we will thank see you, you everybody. Please thank thank you all. To our website and uh, make sure you uh, read about us. And if this course inspires you, be a member. All right. Thanks, Nidhi. Thanks, Karishma. Thank you, Manju. Thank you, Dr. Vasavi. Thank you. Thanks, Imran. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Manju. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, all. Bye. All right, uh, have we captured everything from the audience chats? Is it good to log off, Dr. Vasavi? Uh, do we have Darpan here? Darpan, are we good? Have we recorded everything? Yes, it's done. So we can All just right. uh, leave. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.